Hello, I'm Bruce Lorenz, and this show is called Bruce on the Loose. That gives me liberty to talk to people in city government, the school system, and lately we've done the shows in the business community. Today we're very happy to have Ben Smith with us, a school resource officer, and uh, he really gets around to various buildings. And uh, Ben, what about your training, a specific training you had to get to this position? Uh, so. Wadsworth SROs, specifically uh, Dan and I, we go through something that Ohio, the, the state puts on. Um, it's the Ohio School Resource Officer Association. Uh, essentially, we become uh, accredited SROs through an SRO boot camp, is what they call it. Um, it's a one week uh, series of a bunch of different types of classes from de escalation, youth mental health. Uh, how to how to conduct law enforcement within a school district, um, how to work together with administration. So that's the baseline for a school resource officer in Ohio. You have to attend that boot camp to be an SRO. On top of that, we, we do get additional training as we go. I would imagine as society changes, we get in, you know, 10 years ago, technology wasn't quite as prevalent as it is now. Mm -hmm. You probably have updates along the way. Yeah, yeah, we take classes whenever we can. There's a lot of different organizations that run classes, not even tailored specifically towards SROs, but things that would help us out in the school district, so, like social media, digital media, um, you know, de-escalation, that's always a good one, especially in the schools. So uh, whenever those trainings pop up on our radar, we try to go to them because they're relevant to our job. What triggered your desire to first become a school resource officer? Ever since I heard of the position, I, I always wanted to become one. Mm -hmm. um, SRO is, is a heavily uh, community-oriented position. Um, there's a lot of eyes on you. You know, it's, uh, sometimes it's a controversial position for, for parents and some you know, uh, people that attend the school. So um, it's, it's a really great opportunity to provide a positive light on law enforcement and interact with the kids and, and, uh, and just be that representative of the police department in the schools. And it's a big honor and, and I've always wanted to do, um, do the position because it is so community oriented. And that's what I, that's what I like about it. How long have you been the uh, SRO uh, person here in Wadsworth along with Dan? Yeah, so at the end of this school year, I came in at uh, kind of the half year mark. Um, so I didn't start at the beginning of a school year. Mm -hmm. uh, so at the end of this year, that'll be two and a half years that I've been a, a full-time SRO in Wadsworth. And have you picked up things each and every year? You probably, your, your breadth of knowledge and how to work with students probably grows a little bit. Yeah, I think being, <laughs> being, a, yeah, being a younger officer, you know, I hit my five year mark this year as a police officer. Right. Um, so doing, becoming an SRO halfway through my, my career, um, I've learned so much just, just in law enforcement in general, uh, specifically towards handling juveniles and going through the court cases and that process. And it re it's really taught me how to, how to speak to people and, and, and interview kids and, and stuff like that. So I think all of that will be helpful in my, in my career in the future. Did you have a mentor, someone that uh, you could look up to and gave you little tricks of the trade? Yeah. Those mentors are very important, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, any senior officer is a good mentor. You know, I, mm -hmm. they've dealt with so many different types of things that I haven't yet. Uh, Dan has been a great help to me because he's been doing this twice as long as I have. He's also been an officer twice as long as I have. Adam Innocenti, before I took over for him, I kind of went through you know, I was step in step with him during the school day for a few months uh, while he trained me in, in becoming an SRO and kind of what it looks like in the Wadsworth School District. So um, I still ask them a lot of questions. I still bounce things off of them. Uh, it really is a lot about teamwork and, and uh, that community of police officers all coming together to figure out each and every problem. So. We have a lot of students coming to Wadsworth High School, I think over 1,500, mm -hmm. but a unique situation is with the Four Cities Compact. We partner with Barberton, Copley, and also Norton, mm -hmm. and there will be students coming from those districts here for carpentry, mass media. Do the other resource officers give you a heads up that, you know, this is a new student or we've had some difficulties with this student, he's made some uh, rough decisions over the years to, to kind of help you out a little? Yeah, we will work with other SROs, you know, we don't do it often. You know, typically if something happens in Wadsworth, we handle it mm -hmm. in-house. Uh, we may exchange some emails here and there, but that's pretty rare. 
um, you know, unless it has to do with maybe an investigation and we need to go to another school, uh, we'll definitely give that SRO a heads up and, and say, hey, we, we may need to come over and talk to a student and get all the proper permissions and all that stuff to be able to do that. But uh, we, work, we work lightly with other SROs um, as needed, I would say. What about the teachers and also those, those instructors in the Four Cities Compact? We have a new student maybe coming in, or again, a student that has uh, some uh, difficulties. And again, they, they could have some situations in the home, mm -hmm. lost a grandparent or whatever. Do they come to you and say, hey, maybe just keep an eye on this uh, young man or this lady? Yeah, I, I think the entire district, um, all the staff, all the administration, uh, even if you're part of the Four Cities Compact and you're not technically a Wadsworth, you know, mm -hmm. teacher, um, we all have the responsibility of bringing up any issues we may see within students' home life or if they're, if they're acting abnormal in class, you know, you, if they're a bright and cheery student most of the time and then they're having a really bad day, I think it's everyone's responsibility to step up and report that to maybe the counselors or the main office. So we can at least talk to that kid and just see if something's going on. Sometimes it may be something minor, sometimes it could be major. So um, I think we all have that responsibility uh, as a staff and as a school district. That's interesting you bring that up. Sometimes it isn't a major situation, maybe uh, a change of, of friends uh, yeah. coming around. Maybe the student was very consistent with homework and suddenly isn't doing homework. Mm -hmm. Maybe dropped out of a sports team or mm -hmm. a theater or something like that. Uh, and those uh, teachers and advisors, they know that and they can talk to the, the counselor and you mm -hmm. can really go a long way, can it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's just it's just about making sure that each and every kid is cared for, um, you know, showing showing the kids that we're concerned and that we actually care about them goes a long way. Uh, and we really do. You know, if someone's having a, a bad day out and, and they're acting outside their normal temperament, you know, we want to know what's going on because it could, like you said, it could be they didn't make the sports team and they're bummed out, or it could be there's some type of abuse going on at home that they're too afraid to speak up on their own about. So it's almost critically important that we identify these kids and make sure somebody's talking to them and, and trying to see what's going on. Yeah, sometimes we forget about those uh, students that uh, maybe not quite made the grade. Mm -hmm. They went out, they came out for a uh, particular part in a play mm -hmm. or cheerleading or, you know, baseball. I know uh, Coach Picker was telling me there were so many kids com c coming out mm -hmm. and there's only so many that they can work with. And, and that's really a difficult uh, situation mm -hmm. where the student said, you know, I, I've got this, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the parents are saying, yeah, you're, you're really good, but it just doesn't turn out. That, that's really a, a difficult uh, situation for students to deal with. Yeah, and I think we can't, we, I think as adults, we may deal with some issues that are greater than what students may be dealing with, but in a student's mind, that may be the biggest mm -hmm. thing they've ever dealt mm -hmm. with or the biggest hardship they've ever experienced, you know, to date. And so, we have to remember that we all view things differently and something that may seem minor to us is huge to them. And so you can't overlook any of these issues and, and how it's affecting them. And you have to get to the bottom of, of what's going on and then basically create a plan on, okay, how can we, how can we mitigate those feelings? How can we bring you back up and, and get you back on that path to uh, success? So that's what we all have to do as a staff. Um, and, and I play a part in that too, in some degree. A recent Gallup poll said that as a direct result of COVID-19, a lot of our young people are quite depressed. They were isolated for a while or they had uh, uh, wired, they did it on technology, their education. Uh, college students certainly were affected and especially the, the girls are quite depressed. Uh, is there, has there been some discussion you've had or maybe with counselors or administrators to kind of deal with and, and a lot of times the students don't express that depression. Mm -hmm. And we're, it's like a guessing game. Uh, we're, we're very, it's difficult to project. Yeah, I think it's uh, that old saying, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. I think there needs to be involvement from the parents. There needs to be involvement from the school staff. And uh, like I said before, it's just identifying who is having issues and bringing those to light and, and talking to them about it. Uh, showing, showing them that we care, that we're here for them, 
providing them the resources they need, whether it's counseling or home resources for mom and dad. Maybe they don't have enough to eat at home. Um, but yeah, I, I think that COVID, you know, being at home, we're social, we're social creatures. You know, we want to be out and, and having a fun time with our friends. We want to uh, go out and do fun things. And when you take that away from somebody, especially a teenager, um, it can feel very lonely and, and very isolated. So yeah, that would have a, a major impact on mental health. And, and we've seen that. And I think a lot of places have taken taken the strides to um, get those kids back up and have more social events and, and more fun during the school year rather than hit you with homework after homework. You know, you have pep rallies, uh, different events, dances, all that stuff is is partly because we want to maintain that mental health and that socialness. How did you deal with COVID? I know it was uh, very difficult for the teachers and the support staff and the mm -hmm. principals. How did, do you have a couple stories that you dealt with COVID and it was not easy, was it? It wasn't easy. I mean, you know, as a police officer and, and a lot of the essential services, you know, we don't, there is no staying at home for us. You know, we're, we're on the road no matter what, mm -hmm. you know, tornado, mm -hmm. you know, hurricane, we're out there. Um, we don't, we don't turn off. Um, so yeah, I, I, that provided a lot of difficulties for us. And, uh, specifically in the school district, you know, there was periods where, okay, you had to wear the mask, you know, for a couple weeks, and then there was no mask for a couple weeks. And it's very, a fluid situation based off the rise and fall of COVID. Um, so that presented a lot of challenges for, for everybody. And you're just doing the best you can to wade through those problems. And you can't expect to be perfect or fix everything. Um, but you just do the best you can with the circumstances you have. And, and uh, but yeah, I mean, it was incredibly challenging, I think, for everybody. Um, so. Yeah. How, how do you interact with the principals? We have uh, really a, a fine a core of administrators here and they really look out for the students and they seem to be quite involved in so, so many other things. Do you talk to them on a regular basis about a particular student or a group? Yeah. Yeah. We work together all the time. Um, that's that's my job is to work with the administration. Um, you know, it's in my title. I'm, I'm the school resource officer. So anything that has to do with law enforcement or safety, you know, I'm kind of that uh, consultant for them and that bridge between the police department and the school district. Um, so we're working together all the time uh, on on whatever issues we're facing in the in the district. The counselors also they they're really adept at uh, resources. They, mm -hmm. they seem to help families. Hey, this is out there. Salvation Army helps, mm -hmm. you know, fish. We have organizations in Wadsworth that mm -hmm. help people that need it. And especially with inflation now, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's not as it was prior to COVID. It seems like our dollars don't go quite as far <laughs> yeah. as they did before. Right. Uh, I'm, sure the, I'm sure you help with the counselors mm -hmm. and, and assist them and vice versa all the time. Yeah, absolutely. If, if we identify, you know, as a police department that a kid is having a rough time, you know, we'll fill the counselors in. We'll let them know, hey, it might be worth talking to this student um, and just seeing what's going on, see if they need anything. You know, again, it's going back to, it's all about making sure the students know that we care and that, you know, maybe outside of the schools, they feel like nobody cares about them. And at least when they come to school, they know they have somebody to turn to and, and speak with and, um, you know, somebody that's not going to judge them or, or look down on them or speak down to them. So we try to make that kind of uh, welcoming environment all the time. And so, yeah, we work together a lot. Um, hey, can you talk to this person? Sometimes they'll have me talk to a kid uh, mm -hmm. if that kid wants to talk to me specifically. So, yeah, we work together a, a lot. Speaking of that, do you talk to students about maybe law enforcement? Do they ask you, hey, uh, you know, what about, uh, you know, uh, speeding? Uh, what about DUI, pulling people? What are you looking mm -hmm. for? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I guess I kind of got into that when I played baseball and I would go out between these and ask the umpires questions and yeah. uh, get in information. And th that yeah. prompted me to get into umpiring a little bit. Yeah, I think that's that's one of the fun kind of community service things that the SROs do is, 
you know, kids are curious. You know, they have a lot of questions about a lot of different scenarios and things. And, you know, they ask for advice on certain things. And um, so, yeah, you're, you're trying to answer those as honest as possible and just give them the, you know, I try to be as, as straight and honest as, as possible to them and let them know, yeah, this is this is the law. This is where you should what you should be doing. Um, so, yeah, they, they have questions all the time. I mean, I feel I probably field 50 questions a day at wow. least, you know, just from curious kids and uh but that creates a lot of positive interactions so i love i love doing that you know i I feel like that's definitely part of my job so you may uh, develop someone's interest in law enforcement Mm -hmm. of course we need you know i we just need uh, people in uh, the fire uh, department Mm -hmm. and police and Mm -hmm. and helping services throughout so uh, you're kind of uh, helping out in real world situations Mm -hmm. and being honest with them and they probably really appreciate that oh yeah absolutely and and you're talking about you know 15 to 1600 kids in just the building Mm -hmm. and you're having interactions with hundreds of kids a day um, just walking down the hallways saying hi to everybody. You know, I give out a million fist bumps a day. Um, all of that, you know, you're impacting the future generation of adults that will either live in Wadsworth or move other places. And so you're kind of, for a lot of kids, you're that first police officer they're, they're having an interaction with. So um, just like first, in, first impressions during interviews, you know, you have, sometimes you only have one shot with with these kids to be a positive or a negative interaction for them. So you always try to make it positive. I know when I was at the middle school, they had a program uh, during the holiday season where a uh, shop with a, with a cop. Mm. I don't know if, you, if Wadsworth still does that, mm-hmm. but th- there were a couple students that were involved in that and, and it, really, it really brightened their day. Yeah, shop with a cop is probably the biggest event that we do. Uh, <laughs> we do it every year, no matter what. Uh, during COVID, when we tried to limit interactions, we actually uh, we got lists from the kids that were involved. We went out and did all the shopping for them, and we brought it back, bagged it all up, you know, wrapped it in presents, and uh, they came through the fire department, and we delivered their gifts to them in kind of like a concession line type of deal. So we will never stop doing shop with a cop. Um, that's our biggest thing. It's the most fun event we do all year. So uh, it, it, it's just an amazing thing to see the kids you know, be able to go and, and get some of the stuff they want for Christmas and just, you know, some they're less fortunate kids. And so, you know, you're giving them that opportunity and, and they're so thankful. They're so sweet. Uh, they buy things for their siblings while they're there. It's just a, it's a fantastic experience. And I imagine the parents too, they, they mm-hmm. probably realize it, especially now we talked about inflation a few moments ago, mm-hmm. how, again, our dollar doesn't go nearly as far as it used to. And they, they certainly would want to get presents and mm-hmm. items for the students, but uh, they somehow just can't do it with utilities yeah. and house payments, rent payments, and those types of things. I'm sure the parents are really uh, happy with the Oh yeah. And in, in, in the past, you know, four years that I've done shop with a cop, I've never had any issues with parents. They've always been fantastic. I love working with them. Their kids are, are amazing that come through there. They're just so humble and, and gracious for everything that they that they get. And uh, it's really been a, 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 a overall amazing experience working with uh, with these kids. I mean, you know, some kids I still visit uh, t- today, you know, because we formed a bond in just a few, you know, four to five hours. So it's it's awesome. And what about the summers? I mean, you really have some camps, I understand, mm-hmm. over the summers and also, uh, you know, helping students uh, make good choices over the summer. Sometimes we see students come back the next year and I sometimes shook my head and said, is that the same student? And things, <laughs> yeah. things happen over summers that you, we don't really plan for. Yeah, so we don't just, uh, we don't stop as SROs uh, once the school year stops. Um, yeah, we do work the road in between in the summer, but we're also doing a ton of planning and, and uh, uh, preparation for safety forces camp, um, which is a, a camp for a little bit older kids. Uh, they, they take several classes, uh, EMS, police, fire, we all give classes and demonstrations, and so they learn a lot of things about safety there. And then we have uh, a lot of playtime for them, like Inflatables Day. It's just a great summer camp just to go and have fun and learn something. And then we also do Safety Town, which is for younger kids, mm-hmm. and that's learning how to cross the street properly. You know, you're, you're getting into the basics of, you know, what side of the road do I drive on? Do I stop at stop signs? You know, how do I, what's a yield sign mean? 
Um, so they learn a lot of those basic safety things as, as young, young kids uh, in the program. And then the best thing about it is you'll have kids from safety town that you had and you'll see them out in public and they'll be like, that's Officer <laughs> Smith. I had him in safety town. You know, he taught me this. And, and so it's a, it's a massive community event. It makes the community safer. Um, so overall, it's just a, it's a great program, both of them. Yeah, they, they don't forget you, and, mm. and that really help. If there's something that is amiss in their home or you know next door or down mm. the street, then I would think the tendency would be to you know go ahead and say, hey, Officer Smith, th there's something that, that's not right mm. here. Maybe you could follow up on it, and you take it from there. I mean, mm. the rapport yes. goes a long way, I would think. Yeah, I mean, the biggest part of our job, I would say, is establishing those connections. Um, a lot of kids are, are, they may be afraid to speak with administration or speak with a school counselor. Um, so I do have kids that, that kind of confide in me and uh, they want to explain their issues to me. And, and you know, if I, if I can direct them and help them in any, any way, I will. Um, we also have kids that tell us about, you know, incidents that, are, that may be coming up in the school that we can kind of jump out in front of to make sure everyone stays safe. And, and uh, it's a good school environment. So um, establishing those connections and that rapport with students is probably the most essential part of our job. I've talked to parents over the years, maybe at uh, uh, get togethers with uh, grades and uh, taking a look at parent conferences, that no extracurricular, extracurricular activity is a, is a poor one. You right. are, are supervised by adults. You can make friends with other students in different mm -hmm. grade levels, mm -hmm. like the, the, the theater. My mm -hmm. daughters were involved in the theater. Uh, we know athletics uh, really has a lot of time commitment, uh, but so does student council mm -hmm. and so many other activities. Would you agree with me that extracurriculars are very vital to students? Yeah, absolutely. It gives you, a, it gives you that sense of community um, you, you form bonds with the group of kids that you're with. You know, I'm a baseball coach for Wadsworth. So, you know, and, and playing baseball, you know, growing up, you, those, some of those guys are your, your best friends for life. And you can form those bonds in, in all of these uh, extra activities that they do after school. So it doesn't matter what it is as long as you're with a good group of kids and you're having a good time and you're creating memories and, and forming these, these bonds that, some will last you a lifetime. So yeah, it's, it's essential in my eyes. And also, uh, you know, when we later maybe apply for a job or, mm -hmm. you know, college, put mm -hmm. down, played, uh, you know, soccer or baseball, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be, and I would always explain this to the kids, you didn't have to be the superstar or all Medina right. County. Right. You were committed, you mm -hmm. stayed with it, and you were a part of something. Mm -hmm. Well, it teaches you an additional skill, no matter what extracurricular activity you're doing. Um, it teaches you hard work. It teaches you responsibility. You have to show up on time. You have other commitments outside of school that you need to follow through with. Um, so it teaches you a lot of, yeah, excuse me. It teaches you a lot of life skills um, that, that school won't naturally teach you. So yeah, those, those are all essential. Some very important information here coming across. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> that's, okay, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, what about uh, the situation where what steps have the school taken to go ahead and make things uh, safer in, in parents' mind? You know, parents, yeah. especially coming from eighth grade mm -hmm. to freshmen mm -hmm. and so many more students, um, you know, just the physical, maybe the doors and hallways and yeah. and. and the trainings, maybe some of the teachers, if you could elaborate on that for a mm -hmm. moment. Yeah, so I, I think the school district as a whole, uh, we are always looking for school safety grants um, because a lot of this stuff costs a lot of money and uh, especially the technology side of things. You know, we're using the cameras. The cameras are a massive help in keeping the school safe, um, seeing what, what students are doing because uh, we can't have eyes everywhere, right? So we're always looking for school safety grants. Um, specifically for, you know, can we lock down a door with a click of a button? Because that's important, right? Um, can we get more cameras, better, better quality cameras? Uh, can we hire more people to patrol the hallways? These are all things that we discuss, you know, and, and we, have, uh, we have teams put together in the district that work on safety uh, specifically. We're all involved in that. Uh, we meet very often to go over uh, new ideas. You know, do we need new radios? How is, how is our communication in the building? What are some 
uh, apps on the phone that we can use to get mass communication out there in, in case of an emergency. Um, so we are always working on on school safety and how can we upgrade it and what is it going to cost and constantly analyzing that and that's part of our job as well as SROs is to advise on that that safety piece. Funny you mentioned that a couple of weeks ago our governor was in Lakewood and he toured the building and on the second floor it looked down on the cafeteria and one thing they would like to do is have reinforced glass mm -hmm. that some intruder couldn't go ahead and, and wreak havoc mm -hmm. on that school district so the governor then awarded Lakewood schools with some money. Mm -hmm. As you say, it's, it's not always available in the school budget because mm -hmm. it's above and beyond. Um, mm -hmm. it, is there some monies available and are some things really visible that you, you could correct fairly easily? Yeah, I think, you know, it, it would be awesome to be able to reinforce every piece of glass in the in the school district um, but that would cost millions of dollars and so that's why our teams get together and we talk about what is essential what's important now um, what can we what's feasible what can we actually get the money for you know this grant awards this much money um, so what are we going to apply that money to now what's what's the most important stuff to get what equipment do we need um, so we're always talking about that there is definitely money available um, the state helps out there's a lot of different grants that the schools are always um, applying for and uh, so yeah there are a lot of upgrades coming down the road it's just a matter of getting the grant securing the money hiring the company to to do the work so but those things are always in the works we're always looking to improve the, the safety of the schools in any way we can well that, that's good to know because uh, things can change momentarily yeah. and to be ahead of the game is certainly a, a good situation Absolutely. ben smith i do the show because i learn a great deal and, and you really enlighten me on some of the things that you're working with and the school district's working with and i'm sure the parents and the students appreciate that and the staff as well and thanks for viewing bruce on the loose and we'll have uh, Mike Kovac on as guest coming up next week. Perfect. Look at that. You are watching WCTV, Wadsworth Community Television.